Okay, welcome to the and hackathon. I think maybe oh, I'm gonna I'll do the rubric since I said I was going to. Sure, let's do that. Here's my screen share, and here we go. So everybody's back in, and um, we all saw this yesterday. But this is maybe the first time our judges are seeing it too. So I just want to go through this so we're all familiar with the um, criteria that we're going to be using to select a winning team. And so we have the fit. Does the product address the prompt, which Cynthia beautifully presented to us yesterday, GIS mapping for social good. So how well does the solution um, address the theme of the hackathon? Next, in terms of innovation, uh, how does your solution, how innovative is it? And we talked a little bit about innovation being not just content, but also contextual. Within the confines of the region within which you're addressing the problem, is it an innovative solution? Is it something that's been tried before in the region, or is it something brand new? Um, functionality. Is the product working? Is your solution working? Did you get it to do what you need it to do? Um, the design, does the design support the functionality? Is it aesthetically pleasing? And does the design support the message of the product you've developed? Last one, um, can the product be easily expanded in the future, right? What is it doing today? What do you want it to do tomorrow? And um, how easily is that going, how easy is that going to be to do? Um, can it be expanded by other coders? All right, so that's our rubric. I am going to stop sharing. Um, I am going to put the link to the rubric in the chat so that if anybody wants to grab it um, while judging happens, you have access to it. So you can sort of have that in the back of your mind while you're watching the presentations. All right, with that, let's introduce our judges for this year. So Scott, welcome um, to the judging. Do you wanna introduce yourself to our, our presenters? I'm currently based in the Hudson Valley. I've lived overseas for 25 years in Dubai, Sydney, and Japan. My background is started off in the semiconductor business when a 1K dynamic RAM was big, and I have gone through a dozen generations of technology, and now I have been supporting ventures as they scale globally, um, and have invested in a number of projects and companies around the world. Wonderful, thank you so much for being a part of this today. Appreciate you being here. All right, um, Joe Cupano is another one of our judges. Joe, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Joe Cupano. I've been in the tech industry for about 25 years. Um, worked with global financial startups, entrepreneurial type stuff. So I've done business in four continents, 22 countries, and most of, the, in most of North America. Particularly in background of cybersecurity and cloud. So some companies I've advised and gotten to go is working with uh, Qualys, Checkpoint, and uh, some other companies along those lines in the security space. So listen, always looking at the, what's the next best greatest thing. It always comes from an idea uh, from a hackathon like this and always trying to connect people with people who actually have interest in these type of uh, things that come out of hackathon and yep. looking to, hey, if it's something that can be bigger, better, better than what's out there, that's fantastic. So look, looking forward to it. Thank you very much everyone for all the time and effort you've put in. Uh, this is very common when it comes to come up with a minimum viable product. So be very proud of yourselves to, to the point you've reached it today. Yep, awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. It's great to have you be a judge again this year. And Yulia, since you are joining the ranks of our judges, do you want to just do a quick intro as well? Is she, oh, I don't see her. Oh, there she is. Yulia, are you with us? Thought you were there in the background as Hudson Valley can code. All right, let me um, ping Julia for a second and see what's going on here.
Well, she's pinging. This is Eileen. I'm just going to jump in. I'm just helping. Of course. To so none of our, we have, oh, we have so many people without video on. And even if you're still in your pajamas or you're eating, you know, we'd really like to see your faces. It really helps create community and, um, you know, really just makes us know you're there. So if you want to turn it on, we'd love it. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you for those of you that did. Great to see you. And I see a puppy. I'll go get mine. Oh, Shih Tzu. Thank you to all of you that turned the cameras on and back to you, Andrea. Thank you so much. Um, so I don't know where my friend Yulia is. Um, let's see, she's not here. All I can add for you for, is for Dr. Yulia Ovchinikova, she's um, uh, given her degrees, he's also uh, has early heritage in the early DNS uh, domains for uh, the Russian domains and actually de dealing with the various languages that had to be translated into the various domains for Cyrillic or have you. So she's actually did a presentation for the Hackers on Planet Earth Hope Conference a few years back, if you look for that, is very interesting of all the early work she's done for the domains for Russia. Besides mm -hmm. being the founder of the HB Tech Festival, besides being founder of Open Hub and all the uh, fine, uh, fine educational things that come out of that. That's the best I could do in short notice. That was good. That was good, Joe. Quite impressive. Quite impressive. Um, all right. So I'm going to excuse myself for one minute and be right back. And then we're going to start um, present presentations with our Autism Cares group. I'll be right back. So uh, while that's happening, any questions? Anybody want to say anything? Or I did want to say, take a what, be right back, Beth. Okay. Um, I, I notified the Hudson Valley can code, but our team, we'd like to have one person presenting, but then each person speaks. So um, sure. hopefully they'll unmute all those. I put that um, in the chat, direct chat. So. Um, can you just give me, um, uh, here's Yulia. Everyone was looking for you and telling your bio, Yulia. It was a beautiful thing. They know more about you than you know about you. Wow. Okay. I was introduced saying that. No, uh, but how would you like to introduce yourself as a judge now? What's your background? As a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Honest. The game changer. I met Yulia um, over the summer at a, uh, at a startup weekend and she had eyes on you. I, she knew what was going on in that room all the time. Yeah, all no, right. And we had a question from Patrick who wanted to make sure that his whole team could be unmuted when they presented. Yes, I am doing a lot of logistical backend background work right now just to have it happen. So I'm excusing myself not showing up <laughs> on proper time, but I changed settings. So you're all supposed to be able to do screen sharing. Only <laughs> the trusted people are allowed in, in the room right now. So I hope to control this as well on the backend. And I will remove myself and I will assign the Hudson Valley can code duties to someone else to work with judges deliberation as a judge because I was not seeing what you were doing. I'm so starving to see. Senators are calling me, it's like, what's going on? <laughs> How we have the idea lab happening right now, right here? And the answer is yes. Okay, that's it. Andrea. Bye. I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> Are you ready? Everybody's ready? All right. So let's do this. Um, it looks like the way Yulia has set things up right now, um, you will be able to share your screens and present and share your ideas. So with that, I am going to turn it over to the Autism Cares team and let you present your screen and um, let us know what you did. Let's see, who is that? Is Are they here? Abishri and um, there she is. Um, hi, um, I hope I'm audible. Um, apologies for the delay. 
um, there was a technical glitch in India, so I was um, <laughs> I was a bit stuck. Um, um, I hope I'm audible now. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, and I see Arna's on. And um, did you have another member on your team? Yeah, we had um Samir. Um, he's also there. So I request um Samir to um share the screen. Yeah, sure. Let me share the Yeah. Um. Can you share the screen? Yes, I'm about to. I'm sorry. You can see the website, right? Yep. So um, a little backdrop about autism. It's actually an intellectual disability and it's it's a very prominent disability, like one in eight children have autism. So when you Google autism, the maximum thing you'll find on the internet is going to be blogs and articles and just write-ups on autism. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing like a digital tool that you can actually use. So we came up with this website called um, You Ought to Join Us, which talks a bit about autism. As you can scroll down, it explains what autism is. And it also has a video from the perspective of a person who has autism. And if you will go up a bit, like you can also play the video. And when you click on the blog button, we have included certain blogs um, that talk about people who are on the similar journey as you are, if you know someone has autism. So it talks a bit about um, different people's experience. Um, we've also um, included an educational game so a little backdrop on why this is this is one of the major highlights of our project is because autistic kids are visual learners. If you will if you will verbally try to teach an autistic child how to make an omelet or something, um, my friend um, Samir can meanwhile actually um, walk you through the games. We have like um, a two to five year old uh, range for kids who have autism where you can teach them colors and stuff, and then there's another one. So talking a bit about how. Uh, autistic kids are visual learners you um if you will try to teach them basic life skills and stuff through words they will not understand it but if you will show them pictures they will understand it clearly now even today um all the special teachers and everything they have they use a the traditional means wherein they take out printouts from you know they they have like they take out printouts and they make like these workbooks step by step there is no such digital alternative to the traditional way of making these uh, workbooks like i personally reached like research a lot but there was this one website which had these kinds of educational games which were discontinued because they were all um, operated on flash so currently there's no such game or educational game especially for autistic kids and we to show the prototype of how an educational game can help them we kind of made this quick prototype to walk you through that um you know in this way actually autistic kids are being taught life skills so that they can be independent afterwards when they grow up um to also help the pe the parents or um any any guardian who has an autistic child or an autistic autistic person we've also included um the you know we've included this very cool geo application tool wherein um you can enter your location and it will show you everything or any it'll show you all the possible autistic um, schools institutions or any such um, you know any organization anything which has autism on their website or on their name or any of that sort so if you can see the red bubbles these are the locations when you enter delhi um, the capital of india it showed you the nearby autistic um, you know institutions or schools or even mainstream schools who take people with autism and give them admission I have a brother who has autism and he's uh, currently 13 years old and my family and I, we are struggling with finding an institution so that he can get admission and go to a mainstream school. And even a tool as basic as this, it's really, it's not, it's really hard to find. So through our website, through a prototype, um, we aim towards include, you know, we target a specific community, which kind of does get overlooked. I mean, considering the fact that there are no such digital alternative or tools to help the teachers with uh, who teach people with autism, who teach students with autism basic life skills, and they're still using the basic pen paper methodology, we kind of came up with this prototype to you know include them into 
you know, to shed limelight and spread awareness, whether it's, you know, incorporating the blue color in our website or the puzzle logo. We've been very thoughtful with making a website, you know, whether it's including the blue color, the puzzle, even tiny, tiny things so that we can spread awareness about autism and reach out to as many people as possible. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Abhishri. That was fantastic. Um, judges, you have um, two minutes for questions as follow-up. So judges, if you have any questions, you can um, ask them now. So if I understood correctly, and I thank you for your presentation and your solution, you have a website you created some games and your focus is on resources. But is your target market caretakers or the individual who has autism? Um, for our target market, we are, we are trying to reach out as many people as possible. Um, whether it's the caretakers, whether it's providing help to the teachers or any um, newly, you know, any person who, who's a special educator and who's looking for a job or even parents with autism. Um, the fact that there are not many resources out there for autistic people or even anyone who's remotely in touch with them. Um, our prototype is aimed at helping anybody and everybody who's looking for um, actual resources that they can use and not just research papers or theoretical write-ups or all of that stuff. Thank you. You might want to create that question at the very first landing page. Are you an individual with autism or a supporter of somebody who has autism? Because you approach the problem differently. Thank you so much. We'll definitely um, incorporate that into a future plan as we move forward with this topic. Okay, um, let's see, jo Joe, Yulia, any questions for our presenter? No, Scott pretty much covered it for me. Okay, all right, well, thank you. Um, Samir, you could stop sharing your screen. Thank you so yeah. much. Do we judge by execution as well? How do we judge execution? Well, it's on, it's on the rubric right now. So yeah, I mean, just watching the result, ending results, website, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just in the rubric. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, our next team. Let me just grab the spreadsheet and see who is the second one. Um, our traffic data tool for business, utilizing traffic data to support local businesses. So I know that many of you want to join the presentation. So if you want to all, I don't know who's taking the lead on that and running it. Patrick, you had reached out to me. Yes, Alex will share a screen. Okay. And we'll get started. I'll start and then everybody make sure you unmute before we start. Okay. And you want to do full screen, please? Or is there a presentation mode? Yeah, it's a presentation mode. On the right, if you go to present or there, either one. Yeah. It's nice to share. Top Upper right. right. Oh, got there sorry. you go. Got it. Thank you. Super. We good? Okay, our presentation was a traffic data tool to help businesses. And we wanted to use traffic data to help businesses typically at the local level. The, we all, all our roles are listed here. I'm not gonna go through them, but if we go to the next slide. So we, we asked ourselves, how can we help local businesses to thrive? Especially in our current economy where we have COVID going on and things are getting potentially back to normal, but things are also changing. So we're gonna cover today our personas, who the business owners are that we're addressing the use of the various tools and data, and then we'll go into some calculations and displays and then get into future applications. So who are the people in our neighborhood? <laughs> well, the first one is Gonger, and he's a local restaurant owner 
and he is interested in trying to help his business and he's wondering about how to attract new people into his restaurant and he's particularly looking at car traffic because if you look at large trucks he doesn't have really good parking in the middle of the city so he's really trying to address how many cars go through and how can the cars help his business and how can he bring people in through advertising and then rosita She's a person who really wants to open a, a local gas station. She worked at one as a kid and she wants to start one, but she's not really sure where to locate that. And so she also was thinking, maybe I can use some data, uh, GIS local data somehow to help her business. So what exactly is the traffic data tool for businesses? The traffic data, data tool for businesses is a tool that makes use of traffic data and sorts traffic data into a form that is more useful for businesses. It'll give information to businesses based on traffic data that can help them think about uh, profits based on the types of vehicles that uh, travel near their business and give them ideas on how to supply their businesses in the times of the day that will be busiest. Thank you. Um, our data source was the New York State GIS website, and we're able to narrow our search down by county and by transportation theme. Uh, and we used two files, the New York State average annualized daily traffic and the New York State tax parcels, which we used for the businesses and the business types. Um, next slide, please. And one of the challenges we faced was uh, opening those files, which were in GDB format and converting them to a usable format. Um, so we eventually found this open source program called QGIS, and we were able to view the files, as you can see there, that's what they look like, and export them in CSV format. Um, next slide, please. And we filtered the traffic data down to uh, only Main Street in Poughkeepsie. Um, and the uh, data that we used was the road name, the beginning and ending points of where the traffic was measured along that road, average truck and car percentages, and morning, afternoon, and evening traffic. Thanks. So um, we were able to use this data to leverage um, multiple coordinate points on a road to determine the average number of trucks um, versus cars versus um, motorcycles and leverage that data to create um, sort of a depiction of coordinates of high traffic areas. And we can use this information to leverage, um, to leverage this information for businesses to kind of determine um, how they can advertise uh, and also where to, where to locate. So like, one example is that a fast food restaurant, which are indicated by these um, like thumb, thumbnails, they might want to advertise lower price items that are faster to make during rush hours and items that cost more during slower traffic periods. So this part of code is very critical for the real value of each target market. So what we wanted was that most uh, for restaurants, we would want more cars because usually in cars, you would have more people rather than a truck or a motorcycle and motorcycles. We kept them out of question because they were, there wasn't a really high capacity of them, a high amount of them for each like road. So we took them out of the equation and for gas stations, we would want more trucks because trucks usually eat a lot of fuel. So this, uh, for, um, so our, equation that we used was um, for gas stations was to multiply the amount of gallons times the number of vehicles and then uh, multiply that by the price per gallon and then uh, multiply that by the markup. And for restaurants was just um, a basic uh, estimated value that we created for how much money that a certain individual would spend depending on their vehicle type. So for cars, we had 20, for trucks, we had 15 and for buses, we had 150. And a business owner would receive approximately $1,435.20 in a week uh, based on the parameters business equals service station or a gas station. The total vehicles would be 100, the car percent would be 50, truck percent would be 25, and bus percent would be 25.
and the approximate total cost, I mean, total amount received is based, uh, is the car cost, AKA the total uh, amount of money that you would receive from all the cars that pass by. In terms of future improvements and uh, applications, uh, the improvements that we could do is integrating more data, such as you saw before that in the CSV files, there were um, a lot more fields that we didn't use that we could definitely integrate um, inside uh, our structure to show all of that data as well and how that data could help businesses. Also integrate it from more sources. So things such as uh, cameras or um, other sort of um, recording um, tools. We would also streamline the code to use JSON directly instead of CSV uh, because uh, that would one, make it uh, simpler instead of having to convert the JSON to CSV and allow us to get live updating of the data using uh, JSON from servers and devices. Uh, and after all that, we would uh, utilize machine learning to refine and clean the data automatically, uh, thus um, uh, lowering the uh, amount of errors, the um, margin of error, the uh, sort of things that would um, change the data that will be inputted um, into the Python to then create the, um, um, the monetary data. Um, in terms of applications, uh, there, there's business location planning, infrastructure planning, delivery route planning, uh, customer identification, and zoning and city planning. Uh, conclusion, the traffic data tool for businesses will help business owners learn and understand traffic data and how it can impact their profits and their business decisions. It is something that would uh, grow over time and be able to supply large amounts of data through maps and uh, databases to help businesses grow more and more and make smarter decisions. All right, awesome. Traffic project presentation. Excellent, excellent. And so I am going to now turn it over to our judges once again so that they can ask you any questions. Congratulations on tackling a tough subject and problem and uh, folding multiple team members in because every person you add to the team adds complexity to a project. So I gotta congratulate you guys on having a large team working on a hackathon as if it was a real business, congratulations. So my question, if you're about revenue improvement for businesses, you can give them a fee and a success fee based on your products, kind of like a Google approach for advertising, but you also have the opportunity for which signs in town, billboards or whatever, would be the most impactful. So I like where you're heading and I think you've got the foundation for it, but you need to look at the economic standpoint for this one. So the question that I have for you is, what was the original trigger for your project? Um, I can answer that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the original trigger for the project was, I know there's Poughkeepsie Roadway rework they're talking about, especially near the Mid-Hudson Bridge and congestion. So the original uh, topic was really, uh, can we use traffic data to, of, to monitor congestion and design like uh, roundabouts or whatever? And since then, somebody's mentioned businesses. And so our persona changed from a driver going through using traffic data to owners. Um, so it did change quite a bit based on the team and our passions. So <laughs> it was, you know, it's traffic, but. Sometimes it's useful, especially in hackathons, 
to frame where you started and where you finished, even if it's an afterthought, to show the evolution of your thinking versus we started with this problem, we ended up solving a different problem, which is fantastic. Because if you're dealing with safety and security, it would be a different problem and solution, but potentially the same project you have. So congratulations. Absolutely. And I see Scott is using this time to not only <laughs> understand better, but also to provide the mentorship right here. And he is tremendous asset for that. I would ask only one question because it's kind of, I shall ask the first team as well. But the question is about if you would be given one phrase for your value proposition, really quick, elevator pitch, one phrase, what do you do? Anyone? I'll let someone else speak on that one. Team members, what do you do here? So I think it's leverage data to improve community outcomes. Leverage traffic data, data to improve community outcomes. Whether it's roots or economics. Okay, thank you, <laughs> yeah. answer it. <laughs> hey, uh, one thing I do wanna point out, the, the fact that we, that we did multiple pieces um, there's a lot of innovation that happens when you pivot more than one thing. If you just take traffic, you come up with one thing. If you just take business and zoning, you come up with something. When you have to say, I have to combine them, all of a sudden you have a focal area of just innovation around you know, that. You take another piece of data and you come up with a totally different idea. Yeah. I got right. awesome. uh, another idea for a, uh, like the, the motto thing that Yulia said. Um, Leveraging traffic data for economic and community solutions. Write all your answers down. They might be all valuable. I like the logic that you're using. Just put a multiplier in there about who has the most pain or who has the most gain. Mm. Right, awesome. Mentoring is assigned after that. So the question I have is, um, pretty much for the pitch, who's the persona for this pitch? The reason I'm asking that is, are you pitching this to someone to take the idea for like, okay, great, you actually have all the technology to go ahead and chunk the data into something, but what's actually the end product of this, especially since it's targeted for local businesses? I'm a local business, this is great, you have all this data, but how do I maximize as local business? What's, what's the minimum viable product you, you're trying to come up with? Is this something I have to build and, 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 and invest in this as a data source or? No, I, I think like we would, you know, given the time frame, we had a lot of constraints. So I think like we started looking into how we can integrate this into applications and how to integrate different elements into the same source. So we started looking into how we can integrate Python into R and then also how we can create this and put it into some sort of application. And, but just with the time constraints and 20 hours is just pretty difficult. No, I under, understood. Sometimes when, you, when you're pitching, like if this was pitching for, um, for capital to go ahead and take the business even further, you always have to have some element of a prototype, a minimum viable product, even if it's just a mock-up. Even if you just show me slideware, what the, what the application would look like, that's fine. I mean, I've known many, many of startups that they have initial seed money just to produce the prototype. They didn't even get to the code level yet. So this is excellent work where you got it to. It's just the, the destination is you always want to get to an, um, an MVP, a minimum prototype. So you get actually giving the big picture how they consume and then you can let the investors think, oh, I can take it, go ahead and do these things or add machine learning or anything else. So the, e excellent work. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you, judges. Thank you for your presentation, hackers. Alex, could you please stop sharing your screen? Sure. And we have one more presentation to go today. So I would like to invite our next team um, with, I believe I lost my spreadsheet. Okay, um, the employment, um, presentation. Can you please tell me the name of the product again that you you worked on? 
to what you call the project? It's called anonymous hires. That's it, anonymous hires. So, all right, so um, get ready, share your screen and you can start your presentation. Hold on a second. Sorry. Nope. We're good. There we go. Perfect. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Is are my other teammates here? Yep, I'm here. Yep. Okay. So this is anonymous hiring. Um. Okay. I think Ben's supposed to go first. Actually. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'll take it from here. Um. So. When in hiring, there's this always this problem that you know that that not only employers are worried about, but also the potential candidates, and that's how basically how their name or how their how their gender, how their sex, how their age would affect them when getting hired. What we we are seeking to do here is basically eliminating any bias in the hiring in the hiring uh, process. Basically, by you know, these, uh, these are basically unfair hiring practices that we seek to eliminate. And a lot of these, um, these situations can lead to financial difficulties and mental and mental health strain because of all the stress trying to find a job that suits you and your needs. Um, this is basically just a study citing that white candidates with criminal records are actually chosen more over than uh, black candidates with no such history back in 2003. Um, these are just statistics about EEO data and just uh, making sure that different, you know, these different discrimination complaints are being filed and not really being addressed. Um, this is just another statistic about, you know, discrimination in the workforce based on gender. All right. And then you want to take it, Dom? Yeah. All right, so continuing on with the problem is that with the job search process, the, it's, the job search is mundane and it's very complicated. And oftentimes people are too busy like applying and looking for a job and they're not taking the time to focus on their skill and what they're actually applying for. And, and as a result, like for example, to Inter to go through an interview process and then wait afterwards for like weeks even. And sometimes you don't even get a response at all. And it's a really big nuisance because if you're not going to get hired from that job, you could be spending that time looking for something else. However, I created a, well, I came up with an idea. And this idea is known as a fully anonymous hiring process. And the major flaw in the hiring process is that humans are involved with it. Humans dictate whether or not um, a person is going to be able to make a paycheck. So this solution removes that completely or at least mitigates it. And it enables, and as a result of mitigating that human element, we can actually bring out the potential in people that are seeking jobs. People can actually find work. They can actually spend time learning something, learning new job skills, and actually applying them. Therefore, you know, boosting the economy and therefore creating financial stability. And let's see here, job listings. And even on like the employer side, you know, when employers are looking for potential employees, they are spending too much time searching for someone. So removing that human element enables employers to be able to focus on their business, focus on the work and therefore maximize efficiency and get employers that, and get employees that they need. And I don't know what this is, but, uh, so let's see, we can skip that. And we can go on to how it actually works. So let me actually screen share some of this code. Actually, let me say, sorry. Five, 
and I can't even see what's going on here. Uh, can you see the? Uh... We All see right, the so... present. We see the presentation still. Ah, okay. So let me uh, you share. All right, now do you see the uh, website? We see Megacorp dashboard. Good, all right. And this uh, is the uh, product of Matthew. So he's going to explain what this actually is. Sure. All right. So one of the core principles of that anonymity is that employers aren't able to see directly who they're hiring. They're not, they're not able to see the person behind the skills. They're only able to still, they're only able to see what skills they're hiring for a job and only, and the, and how those skills match up to jobs they posted. So on the left, you've got your job listings. These are the job listings of Megacorp in this example. They posted a role for DevOps, a role for evil logistics, a role for devious chef, software engineer, and other, and others. These, these listings have a title, they have a description, and on the first, the first page uh, that we're shown here, there's the app, the people who have applied, uh, there, there are people who have applied and the skills those people have. As you may be able to note, you can't see the name of the applicant, only an ID that they have. So an employer isn't able to see who a person is. They're not able to look at their Facebook and go digging on them. They can only see what they can do. And if you go to edit listing on this page in the center, you're able to see how an employer can create a, create a listing. So say you want to add some, say you want to add some skills to a software engineer job, you type in something like Python and it would show you from a list what in the, yeah, in the center type in Python. It, yeah. Click on Python. Yeah. And you'd be able to add it into the in, add it into the list of skills that are required for that job, and that that this listing would now be shown to people who have Python who have Python skills or Java skills or anything of the like. So it's it's a way to help match employers who are looking for skills to employees who have those skills and nothing much in between. Okay, and then Ben did the other side. So on this side, we're looking from potential candidates point of view. So basically on the left side, we have here potential job openings that meet the required skills. So any job basically that they have the skills for will appear on the left side and they can, there'll be a description <clears throat> of the job title, the name of the company, and they can choose to just apply. It'll be very straightforward. It's very streamlined. And once you apply right away, you'd be hired. There's no need for any uh, human overview or, or any human oversight. Of course, it would really come down finally to the, you know, to the company, but the company wouldn't see any information on the uh, employee. Okay, let's see here. So we've gone over this. All right, and actually we are supposed to have, I don't know if our other teammate is here involving yes. the data, Austin. Yeah, so uh, we, we took uh, ONET as a source, um, which is a source of occupational data. Uh, we use this as a database to show like, okay, what job listings might there be and what skill skills might be associated with that job. And so for each job, uh, a skill is rated like one to five. So as you can see here, for example, a chief executive, you'd imagine they have very good management skills. So that's why they have a high score of 4.75. For something like food production, not really required for a chief executive, so that has a low score. Um, and based on this data, uh, we built a recommend a, a rudimentary recommendation system, um, which will output to the user, okay, based on your uh, based on the skills that you have, what jobs might you be interested in? And this is an example of that. So mechanical, mathematics, physics, you get a lot of engineering jobs. Uh, suggest it to you. Yeah. And Ben? Yep. 
Sorry. So some some like future endeavors that we might have is like links to third party certification. That way it's like a plan for funding. We can work partnered with some of these third party websites and third party um, third party organizations that you know certify different skills and that way it will be directly linked with the user. And basically our process to go over it one more time it's the employer creates a job listing and they add the necessary skills for the job. Uh, candidates review these listings while also, at, while also testing for any skills that they have. And then once they see these potential listings, they just apply and they're automatically hired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you for presenting anonymous hiring. Awesome, awesome. So um, judges, questions for our presenters. I will go first then. Do you think it's only skill-based uh, hiring metrics exist in the company? How about soft skills? How about problem solving skills? It's just uh, like trusting the word, right? Actually, like the way that it's designed, uh, the the uh, system in itself already takes that into account. So um, when you, it goes through testing, like the like they're the, the third party that hosts this particular platform, they have already created testing which they themselves administer to employees or potential employees. So if a person claims that they can do something, they have to actually prove that they can do something, and if they are proficient in whatever it is that they're applying for, then they'll receive a badge. And then once they receive that badge, they can look through the job listing. And if the job listing requires that a person has certain skills and they have all those badges, which means that they are proficient in all those different categories, then they'll be able to get the job. So it's not like it's purely skill. It's, it incorporates everything into the uh, proficiency exam, if you will. Very complex system, as I see. Yes. I have to admit that this idea is really dear to my heart. That's where I started with <laughs> initially. Um, and I also have to admit, I really enjoy the fact that Dominic is wearing Halloween sweet. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, for uh, award ceremony, I would recommend everyone have something fun on you. <laughs> Promise? All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. What about Scott or Joe? Do you have questions? I'll let Scott go ahead first. I like this topic area because it's an issue, but I think that there are two things that I would be curious about. Um, one is this seems to be rear view focused, i.e. these are skills I've developed. So when you're early in your career, you might not have many badges. Right. Because, because I have no experience. How do you deal with early career versus later career? Ah, actually, actually, one thing that wasn't mentioned, but is also a part of that system as I've said that there's a proficiency exam, but where there's an exam, there is also a learning platform. So if a person does not pass that proficiency exam and therefore doesn't get that badge, there would be an area in which people can learn. So it would be free for the person trying to get the job because the, the whole point is if a person has nothing and they want to improve their lives, if you expect them to you know, pay for something, they might not be able to. Like the many, I guess, would come mainly from the employers posting the job listing. So they post a job listing. It's like a small fee, but it helps you know maintain the website and helps whoever's hosting it make some money. But the employee then is able to freely acquire the skills necessary. So you provide the skills necessary to you know get the job. And therefore, they can then, you know, participate in the economy and therefore boost the economy and therefore um, bring forth financial stability within the community and maybe even further. Thank you. 
All right, Mr. Yeah, when I, yeah, when, I when I look upon this for anonymous, right, for hiring, I immediately think of people who've been through, um, you know, who, who've, uh, who've been through prison systems and everything else and any type of neg negative aspect that life can deliver at you. And those people are typically looking at um, jobs just to you know, get money again, just to have a, a baseline living. So to me, the anonymization sounds perfect for low skill jobs or you know, low skill jobs that can easily get a skill, whether it's chef or you know, some type of thing versus I saw you had CEO up there, like no one's gonna anonymously, you know, you're gonna have a full background check on someone as a CEO. So why I think is it's, a, I agree, it's an excellent idea. I think the scoping is for people coming out of programs for the halfway houses and the gut nature to help them get to the next type of employment. I'd scope it as that. Um, the other thing too, is I'm trying to, um, Work, who are you putting the anonymization on? So let me give you, or, and for the the the, the uh, education on. So I'll give you a good example. LinkedIn, right? You pay your twenty, thirty dollars a month, whatever it is. It has a lot of training. They actually go ahead and do certification, everything else, and issue badges. For them, they can actually have the possibility of you can API to some to your product, or whatever. Do you for, find yourself to be the middle product between a Coursera, or LinkedIn, and the corporate hiring thing, the hiring site? Or do you find yourself to be embedded with either one of those? Uh, actually, um, to be honest, I didn't really think that far ahead. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. But, but, it, but like, uh, but I mean, I guess like what I was really, like what you said, you know, you're not going to have like a CEO who's anonymous or whatever, but that's the thing. You don't really need that anyway, because it, it I guess this, this, project is focused more on people just trying to get in, trying to better themselves. And when they get in and they better themselves, they got that foot in the door. So then they can prove themselves once they're already inside and they can rise among the ranks. So you don't need that anonymity at that point, but yeah. it's getting the foot in the door. That's the issue. Okay, good. I, I just want to make sure you scope, you're getting scoped accordingly in that regard. And also where are you in the value chain in that, in that probably someone who, you know, someone who's just uh, trying to get entry, you know, they, someone gets a first time LinkedIn profile and they get zero connections. Like, well, that, you know, that's an uphill battle. They need something like this to go ahead and let me go ahead and connect in and sh use some intermary to, to share skills. So, okay, good. Now you gave me an idea where you're at in that ecosystem. Thank you. No problem. All right. Awesome. Kudos to all of our teams for presenting. I mean, really, it gets up and wow. do, does it? Brave, brave, brave. And you're challenging yourself and you're sharing ideas. It's just wonderful. So um, I am going to excuse myself and meet with our judges in a separate room. And I get the privilege of turning it over to Eileen, who is really going to, I think, challenge your thinking even more, but also um, get you to share some things and see where you can go from here. So with that, I'm going to sign out and um, we'll be back in, oh, 3.30 is our award ceremony. Here's the updated, there's the updated schedule. So we should be back around 3.30 and we'll announce awards. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, judges. We, um, I'd love to see your faces again, but, um, and I'd like to give you all a hand. My skeleton hand. Yes, extra hands are always good, especially this time of year. Um, I really just uh, want to say a few brief words to challenge you, and I hope some of you will talk. Um, but that was really amazing. Um, you know, every project uh, had so many legs to it in so many different ways. And for social good projects, and you should know that I'm a social worker, so I got into this business to really help people to be able to seek independence and get what they need. So I love these social good projects. Um, I will also tell you a bit about me. I also um, basically come out of HR and I have a book called Managing Annoying People. So I'm thinking, will that employment algorithm help me with the personalities or will I lose my job or I get more of a job when you don't know who you're hiring? So uh, it's a really, really interesting question. And, um, you know, just a lot of great stuff going on there. So I just want to give you um, kind of a framework. First of all, really do congratulate yourselves. You showed up this weekend, you stayed through it, and I want to hear what you learned and your takeaways, but not everyone shows up, and that's the first thing that you have to do if you really want to be an entrepreneur, a founder, and change the world, show up, so that's good. 
Um, I want to give you three things to think about on what to do next, how to leverage this responsibility, uh, this uh, opportunity. Um, for I, if you can, just write in the chat, like, is this your first hackathon? You do many, or like, why did you come to it? You know, is it something to do? I can tell my uh, friends I'm busy, you know, or is it because I really want to learn the skill set? I'm just really curious why people show up. Thank you. Yeah, learning experience, networking, because these are really the way in this environment, especially um, since COVID, that relationships are forged and how people get to know each other. So I want to give you three concepts to think about the uh, to leverage this um, opportunity and what you did and simple things the first is about networking the second is about documenting and the third is about resources what's next where can you go so we there's a lot of information out there about networking and I always feel funny when I'm asked to come in and talk to a bunch of coders about networking because you know that's kind of like your mothership right so but you know we're really talking about person to person networking and leveraging who you know so um, we heard about LinkedIn you know for hiring you know link everyone in I'm sure Yulia will send a list around or you've met um, all of your colleagues but the judges the program advisory panel everyone link them in you never know when you're going to need them and um, LinkedIn it's really acceptable to be able to say hey we were once on a hackathon together or I know you know we we're, we're friends because we probably did something together I saw that you have this relationship can you make an intro and people are really willing to do it because of what was said in the employment thing they can look on your profile, they can see who you are, they can see if you're serious, and they really do want to help you. So link all of us in, you never know the connections that um, you might need. The second thing is have coffee, virtual coffee, real coffee, take someone you met and said, hey, I'm thinking about this in my career, do you have time for a cup of coffee? And you would be surprised how, um, you know, even in this environment, virtual coffee or non, people have stopped really doing that one on one. They, you know, people are just fed up with it. So I, I'm really lately, whenever someone says, do I want a cup of coffee and reaches out, I say yes. And I'd love for some of my colleagues to chime in. But, you know, just to chat, sometimes just a 10 minute phone chat, you know, to cement that we met each other, because you never know where these networking things are going to happen or go. And um, if you have another event coming up, or you do other things, or you're in a school, or you have a workplace that has events, just, you know, keep this list. If uh, I don't know, Yulia's not here, if she's going to give you all a list or if they, you know, everybody has, um, you know, the Discord channel and the Slack and just say, hey, why don't you show up? People show up. Everyone wants people to show up. And you never know, you know, when it's nice to get invited to an event and what you might meet, who you might meet and what you might meet. So that's the first thing to leverage what you did today, network. The second thing is to document. This is a little different than your project documentation, but you all, I see a lot in the chart. I started hackathon, learning experience, you know, want to get more skills, all of these things. Pretty soon what happens is you start doing them and you forget who you met where, what you learned where, you forget all the things. So I would say take five minutes at the end of the weekend or tonight before you go to sleep or tomorrow morning and whether you start a file on your folder. Some people really like to do this in a notebook. I know it's so old fashioned to do it in a notebook, but sometimes it really helps to see it in paper um, and write down what your big ahas were from the weekend. You know, oh, I love when that group said this. I really valued when that judge asked that question. I always want to think about answering those kind of questions. Like I loved Scott's question about frame what you did so we know where you started, what pivots you made, and where you went. Um, just FYI, and I'll talk about it in resources. Uh, well, I'll talk about it in resources that I'm a tech stars facilitator and we spend a lot of time coaching people on pitches. And that is a really key element showing the journey because it answers a lot of the judges questions. So I'm not, you know, you can even document, Hey, I'm never doing that again. Or, Oh my God, what about that woman with the hands? I don't want to see her, but you know, seriously, it doesn't have to only be about the hard side. Think about someone who impressed you, a word that was said, a new, um, 
you know, uh, maybe a new concept you learned or an idea you had and write it down because, you know, I might be a lot older than all of you, but when you really overload your brain, even when you're young, if you don't start remembering what did I like or what were my key moments there, um, you're, gonna, you're going to lose them. And that goes for your personal career as well. You want to be able to see your journey. Why did I make the choice to go to this hackathon? Why did that lead me to this? Why did that lead me to that? Because these are all things on your path. So I really urge you to write down, you know, for me, I call them LLs, lessons learned. Sometimes I call them snippets. Sometimes I call them nuggets. You know, sometimes I call them ahas. Sometimes I call them things I wish I knew, you know, but um, write down, you know, what you learned. Just a few key things like, oh, that was fun or Zoom sucks, whatever it is. So you remember where you're going. So you're going to network, you're going to document your lessons learned. And the third thing, oh, oh um, and the third thing you're going to do is think about what resources are available. Now that I liked this, did I like a hackathon? So I am a global tech stars facilitator. You can all um, uh, Google tech stars and uh, Cynthia. Uh, did do you like to go by Cynthia or Cindy? What do you like? Either, either. I've been calling her back and forth because <laughs> I was embarrassed to ask the question. So, either uh, fine. The doctor, Tim the good, Tim I can't even say her last name. So yeah, we'll just call. Her. The good Dr. Marcello has created an incredible toolkit that you all saw with all the open source data. And on the bottom, there is a Techstars toolkit. So I'm a Techstars global facilitator. What that means is I work for Techstars, which is a company that actually um, tries to promote entrepreneurship. And we do that three ways. One by Startup Weekend. Have any of you heard of a Startup Weekend? Give me a hand if you have, or write it in the chat. So Startup Weekend, we had one. That's how I connected to everyone here in Hudson Valley over the summer at Barn Fox. And, um, you know, that's where we try to get entrepreneurs in 54 hours, learn the business model. You know, uh, you heard the judges talk about a minimal viable prod product, um, the, you know, how to get customer validation. That was a great job when the transportation got uh, said, uh, here's our avatars, you know, this is this owner, this is that owner. We go through Lean Canvas, all of the basic tools uh, that you need to know to start a business. And, um, and have community leaders and entrepreneurs and people in this space meet with people who want to. So it's the start of a conversation. Techstars also runs accelerators and we have pitching contests. So you think you have a good idea, go on the website. I think Austin's coming up, there are pitches all over the country and um, you can get into one of their accelerators and then they you know, actually pay for the development of your idea. And also there are other links on uh, Techstars as well for other kinds of contests and stuff. So that's a really other good place to take this kind of thinking and wrap it around a business model. And then finally, Techstars works with companies uh, to do entrepreneurial activities within those companies. So that's Techstars, but um, you should check them out. There's the Hudson Community Incubator. Do you guys know that, them, Eric DeFeo? Just Hudson Community Incubator, look it up. Eric is really open to, I mean, you know, this is a funder who on his website has his email address. Email me with any ideas. That is unusual. So take him up on it. You know, he, I think he, he would love some of these ideas, the transportation one, especially about, um, I was thinking what, a, it's really a marketing tool. That's what you're selling, right? How to know when to be busy, where to start, where to place things. It's really both a, a business strategy and a marketing tool for uh, driving customers. So uh, get to know the Hudson uh, Community Incubator. Dr. Cynthia Fu. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about what you do and how they can connect to you? Absolutely. Um, so basically, you can connect with me via LinkedIn if you want. Uh, I, I wear multiple hats. I am a professor uh, during the day um, and, and at night, um, basically 24 seven. Um, but um, I'm working with Open Hub and leading boot camps, uh, data science boot camps and uh, Python classes, a variety of different classes, SQL Server and what have you. Um, but I love it when folks connect with me on LinkedIn because we can share when I know of links or resources I can share to folks who've attended these hackathons, I love to share that. Um, you know, I also uh, am involved in robotics and a whole variety of other areas that I don't even talk about, but with related to technology. So um, if there's some resources that you're looking for, I can find them for you. Um, and again, this is a space that I find very 
um, rewarding to be a part of because it really changes people's lives. And I think, you know, the extent that which you all are participating in this in this event over the, the last several days shows that you want to make a difference in some area. And that's so important. Um, and you're developing the skills and you're you're sourcing the tools to be able to make that happen. And one thing I, I will say is when it comes to ideation, whatever you do, if you feel your idea is a good idea, try to identify why that is. And if you have trouble conveying to people why your idea is essential, show them. Don't tell them, show them. Show them. All right, Cynthia, it's very, um, in the other part of my life, I'm trying to be a writer and it's tell them, don't show them. No, no. but um, I want to, I mean, I, Cynthia and I, and there are more resources, Cynthia, Andrea, everyone on the program committee, and um, there's E for All, if you don't know E for All, Entrepreneurship for All, it's right over on the other side of the Hudson Valley, and I think they are reaching into Albany now in that area, there are the schools, so you will see everyone here, but Cynthia said something so important that I really want to pick up on and end this thought and, and then hear from you, which is when you do these types of activities, when you think about these projects, when you show up for a startup weekend, a hackathon, you are changing lives. And when you have an idea that's good, it's going to keep on coming back. So the three things that you really want to think about evolving or one, the idea. You had a great idea. What's next? Who else is doing it? Where else does it exist? Can I call another school? Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe you need to connect, um, think about the autism people with someone in a different country that has a model that might fit you. So it's really about, you know, evolving your idea, ideating the idea and thinking about how to grow that idea and where to do that, how to leverage that, who else is doing it, how else do I really want it to be a business, all those things. The second thing that you're thinking about is your skills. What did I learn this weekend? You know, did I, did I know Python as well as I thought? Did I need project management? What did I learn about presenting? What did I learn about, um, you know, it's not just your skills as a a uh, developer and a uh, policy and a program person, but your softer skills, right? Or was I a leader? How did I work with my team? How did I present? I'm talking very fast because I have a lot to say, but you know, all of those things you want to think about too. What other skills? Maybe next time when you go to Techstars, you don't want to be the founder. You want to sit on a team and see what it's like to be one of. So thinking about how to evolve your skill set, both, you know, your hard, uh, you know, skills that you might get a badge on LinkedIn for and your soft skills, you know, when um, that was being said, because I am a leadership coach, I was like, you can't teach leadership. If I, you know, there are so many people that take like this John Maxwell course and God willing, great course, great guy, everything's great, but that doesn't mean you're a leader. It means you took a course on leadership. You know, leadership is something, something else, especially in crisis. So Really think about what skills you want to evolve. Do you want to end in the C-suite? Do you want to be a chief technology officer, a chief product development officer, or you know, a, 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 a chief operations guy? Chief, where do you want to end and what do you need? And the third part about thinking about ideas and then your skills is really to grow your mindset. How are you going to grow your entrepreneurial mindset? How, you know, the questions of even for social good, What's the, how do I monetize it? What's the money? How is this thing going to run? How is it going to pay for itself? Because even in nonprofit, it doesn't mean you don't make a profit. It just means that it pays for the staff and goes back into research and services and not into shareholders' pockets. So every company needs a revenue model, no matter who you are for social good or not. So how are we going to monetize it? How am I? Did I feel bad when the judges talk to me? Or am I growing a thick skin? Am I learning who to trust and who not? Am I getting you know, an executive presence? Am I getting um, my points across in these group meetings? Do people understand what I say? How do I show up? And who do I want to be? So really about you know, uh, developing those skills of flexibility, nimbleness, uh, thick coat, creativity, and, you know, the thing that I think is the hardest thing to do 
in this kind of work, which is the forest and the trees. I don't even know if they call that anymore. I think you guys would know it as the macro and the micro. So it's really like, how do you pay attention to the big picture, the big problems, and then all the teeny weeny little things, you know, that have to go into that, the coding, the staffing, the hiring, the office space, you know, the team, making sure people show up and solving the universal problems. How do you as a person go between those because the more that you can take what you're doing from a little picture to a big picture and a big picture to a little picture, right? Really understanding your why, that's how you change lives. That's when things really make a difference. So I really challenge you to network, to write down what you learned, to reach out and get some resources and to really continue to evolve your idea, your skills and your mindset. And all of us are here for you because all of us really want you to succeed, right? As a community, as a society, and that's the note I will end on, you know? I'm at the end of my career. I'm gonna be 61 this year. I'm so excited to tell everyone. Um, I'm gonna be 61 this year. But the thing is, when I hear these ideas, I, I, I feel relieved. I feel relieved that you, you know, other people are taking on problems and issues. And I believe that you're gonna solve them because of what I saw today and what you did in this short time frame is any indication of what all of you are capable of, the world is in really good hands. And that story needs to be told. So thanks for letting us be here today. And um, with that, any questions, any comments, any things you wanna know, you know, anything you wanna say, now is the time. Anyone? And uh, Patrick, did you want to chime in? Because I'm sorry, I didn't ask you about resources. I didn't see you there. No, I'm fine. I was, I'm was. i a participant, so oh, okay. <laughs> I'm here as a hackathon participant right now. Oh, OK. Um, I thought you were on the. I was a moderator for, or I, I did help earlier in the week at the conference. But then I thought, you know what? I'm doing the hackathon. So, right well, well, why don't you take a minute and talk about that? Why did you do the flip? And what was the experience like? Well, last year, I decided to sign up for as a mentor. And when I was going through it, listening to the projects, I kept thinking, well, these are really exciting projects. And when it comes to coding, especially some of the languages and stuff, I thought, I and participating in hackathons, I'd never participated. So I thought, hey, <laughs> let me give it a try. I love to code, but it, it's always usually in a different environment. So I thought, let me find out. And I learned so much last year. This year, Yulia said, hey, we're actually looking for people adults who do coding of some sort or or not or, or who uh, want to be part of a team and I thought well let me do it again this year and uh, Yulia you can you know how persuasive she is. It's, oh god so, I was gonna say something I I was gonna say no something. I won't say yeah the Russian in her I've been watching Sons of Anarchy so I'm a little proud <laughs> anybody else watch Sons of Anarchy highly recommend a little bloody Anybody else, lessons learned, things you wanted to say? Ruan, um, you came to us as a mentor, right? Yes, so it's a great experience. Uh, thanks for inviting me to help out as a mentor and I was able to use some thought to the green team. So look forward to all these uh, products evolve. Okay, great. Great. Anybody else want to talk about questions, resources, things you learned, things you thought would happen that didn't? Anybody? Oh, my goodness. Where's my guy with the Shih Tzu? A Shih Tzu owner has got to have something to say. He's no. feeding it. He's feeding said Shih Tzu. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> um, I can continue to talk. Is there anything? Do you want to know more about tech starts? Do you want to know more about managing annoying people? I could, I could interject something. It's just Please. a thought. Um, so the management head just popped up in my brain and, you know, it's so important when you're working on a project, something that you're very passionate about, something that you have a great idea that you focus on quantifying the expected return of putting that into production, right? So whether you're seeking seed funding or you're seeking, um, you know, some support in some way, be prepared to quantify what you perceive, A, how are you gonna measure success? And what is the expected return for the stakeholders involved? Um, it's very important that you have to be able to articulate it. And it's not difficult math, but those formulas are out there. Become familiar with what KPIs are, learn how to create KPIs that can be measured, and also understand 
understand the difference between a qualitative and a quantitative uh, variable of interest. Um, very, very, very important. So um, if you don't like stats and you don't like those kinds of things, at least learn the classic formulas that are out there for measuring uh, performance in the domain of interest that you're working in. Very, yeah. very important. You don't want to be caught with, you know, you're so uh, focused on the design and so focused on the idea and the product that you forget, oh, this has to land somewhere because there's money tied to it. There's resources tied to it, scarce resources. So being able to quantify it and, um, you know, have someone that is it is well spoken in articulating that because they will be very aggressive. You know, you want funding. You need to show us that this is going to to, you know, land in a positive place from a financial point of view. Um, so what's the level of risk? Why should we take a chance on you? And so that's very, very important that you you get familiar with how to articulate that. Um, so I just thought I'd share that. Again, I have so many ideas. Um, I'll yeah. shush now. <laughs> and let me build on that because, you know, I said when we were talking about, I said in other weekends, we focus on monetization. And that's really what monetization is, right? It's about building a performer, which is a financial model of your business. So we look at all the things that go in, you know, uh, the website cost, the staff time, all these things. Think about what, how we're going to make money. Is it advertising? Is it grants? Is it pay for service? Is it, um, you know, I don't know, annual subscriptions, whatever it is. And then we look at, you know, where we are. So what we did today was a, this today and yesterday was a really good sense of really digging into the data and understanding how to use the data for um, a good project and how to convert it. And then there are so many other ways and Techstars is one of them to really learn the business side of it and how are you going to show that that works. And um, it, is, it is really, really important and um you know it's interesting because that's the world i come out of i i can i i come out of actually financial modeling so i can really i can model anything which in managing annoying people i can show you how to calculate the amount of time you're wasting by annoying people zapping your energy you know and and but i'm saying you you in in building a business you will need to quantify everything um you know your time staff time all that stuff so cynthia is right other um so oh i see a hand coming in i love it <laughs> there you have another hand and um yeah that's really important and um you know the other thing that's really important is learning how to pitch i have seen teams who really didn't get very far but they knew how to talk about their program now granted this space is getting you know very um complicated and very um nuanced and people understand when you don't make progress and you haven't done your customer research and there's not a MVP a minimal viable product but at the same time you know there's a reason salesmen are salesmen and when you can get up there and be authentic and really talk about something you care about but explain it in a succinct way and um let me talk about that for a minute you want to hear about that there are three different ways that people understand data Either they like to hear the um, outcomes, right? The results, the numbers. So, you know, I'm going to miss it. They like the outcomes, the results, the numbers. Or they like to know um, the inputs, you know, what happened, the process, how did it work? Or they like the heartstrings, what was changed, the delta, what happened because of what was put in the process or what came out. So a good pitch deck person or storyteller will incorporate all three of those elements so that they make sure each judge, each person, each funder that they're going to, no matter how that person likes to think about their decisions, they've hit it a little. If they like process, if they like data, or they like the heartstrings. So, it, and that heartstrings is really that change story. What will be different? And I'm, I'm talking about this group just because it's something I think about so often, which, um, because, you know, there that's how uh, traffic lights get in, right? There's a traffic study about how much traffic, how many pedestrians, what times a day, you know, what's the best thing? Is it a stoplight or, or a blinking light, a stop sign? So um, I, I think a lot, I, I totally lost my point because I was talking about the stoplight, uh, the transportation group, um, but, you know, what changes as a result of that project? 
Business owners can make smarter decisions about staffing time. You know, business owners can make smarter decisions about, you know, where, I mean, you know, you know, it's not rocket science why every Starbucks and gas station is next to the throughway, right? So, you know, at some point though, someone figured it out and that's what we're looking for, those patterns. So, you know, it's really what, what's gonna change? Oh, business owners can make much smarter decisions about, you know, their traffic patterns as where to cite things, what kind of things will do there well there based on those traffic patterns, the times they're busy and stuff like that. So what's the delta? What's really going to be different because of this project? Not, you know, oh, we hope people use it if they're interested. And that's where in a long weekend or a longer weekend, the customer validation really plays a part. Um, you know, I've seen the customer validation talk about a, a journey of a group from taking an idea and pivoting. Um, you know, really changes. And um, so I'm going to give you one snippet in that. Do you want it? Because none of you are talking, so I'm cha cha cha. Um, does everybody know what an ugly baby question is? These are all terms we used like 30 years ago, but they still work. Does anybody know what an ugly baby question is? Nobody? No one wants to say the baby's ugly, right? So always, isn't it a cute baby? Yes, it's so cute. What a cute baby. Have you ever said, you know, then you turn around and go, oh, what an ugly baby, right? But no one ever says to the parent's face, it's an ugly baby. You do not want people doing that about your business. You're like, oh yeah, great idea, great idea. I would do that. I'd never fucking buy that. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? You want them to say to your face, you don't want, you know, that's why we call it ugly baby. No one is ever going to own up to the ugly baby. You want them to, re you want to get really honest feedback about your idea. Will you buy it? Would you use it? Under what circumstances? What, what price points? Why do you think it would solve a problem for you? What is that problem? All of those things really need to be taken into account. So all these ideas today were great, but we don't know. Would a parent with autism use the site? Would they find it? I, I, I think they probably would, but you know what I'm saying. We don't know that. We need to test that. You know, would it be the same site? I think Scott asked the question. Is it for parents or is it for or, um, you know, the students, like who is it for actually? Is it for advocates? So all of those things come into a business model and thinking about your idea. So I've rambled now. Yep. No yeah, questions? Just, just, just while you, you kind of sparked a couple of things, because when we were doing our project, we were mainly, even though we had the, the business interest owner in mind, we were actually thinking this was a countywide service so that um, businesses would, I mean, if it's a free service, it doesn't cost a lot. Like if you look at the software development, well, it was free for this weekend. <laughs> like it didn't cost a lot, but the point is the, the value they get is by having people want to migrate to their area. And we, we really didn't say that. You're right. Um, You're right. A lot that's, of that, that wasn't so said. This is an economic um, development yeah, tool. Yeah, yeah. That's really, that's, right. that is Not charging clients. Good. Right. That so, really sharpens it. Yeah. That is an economic development tool. Yeah. Right. Thanks for pointing that out because a lot of times, part of it is when we do these pitches, um, it would be really good to ask, um, who's the pitch for, and we usually don't get that reminder or prompt saying, who are you pitching to, not what is the project about? And so we're yeah. thinking of the persona of the of the customers or the business owners, but um, yeah, we failed to say, well, who are we presenting to besides the judges? <laughs> so that's yeah. good to know. That's a good and, point. And that's a good and point. That Software. <laughs> Software is a service, right? Um, what I was thinking as you were talking is if you're going to position your business in a certain location, you want frequency, high frequency, and you want to look at the traffic patterns and analyze that as well. But if you're a realtor trying to connect a business, right, now you have some data, you could actually utilize that service and make recommendations to those wanting to buy commercial properties or rent for the purposes of the business. Well, how much traffic do you get? What What is the nature of the traffic? Um, is it usable traffic or is it just garbage going, you know, past my, my door? So I think that that's a software as a service that could be plugged into so many different vertical industries industries um you know people underestimate the power of traffic it's important yeah. boy bouncing out with cynthia is like so great because what i was going to say is she's it's just like she she sets me up every time is and i'm thinking who's going to own that 
right? So why is government going to buy it? What office is it going to fit in? Who's going to keep it updated? How's it going to be funded? So going back to, you know, the point about money. So probably economic development or the Department of Transportation, and it's an economic development tool. Either they sell it, they give it, or it shows in the budget that we expect this much growth for that, that will offset it, or we're doing it as a service. So it also becomes who will administer it? How will it run if it's a social good? But it could be a predictive model. Here's where you take it to the next level using machine learning. That becomes a predictive model for future outcomes. So, oh, yeah. you know, throwing it up in Amazon, you know, or as a pickle file, whatever, and being able to, A, you know, classify your traffic if you're doing classification, cluster the traffic to determine the nature of it, yeah. um, but also predict, you know, future outcomes and doing time series analysis right. as and well. Measure, I mean, you could, that, now you can measure and in those device pieces were kind of a yep. sensors the whole and, time data and yep. this is why you go to these weekends now they're talking about the evolution of the idea and in my yep. head i'm thinking about the evolution of the money oh so now you're going to come up with a model that can be plugged into any community so you can start a business even though it's for social good that can sell to you know, governments, counties, it could also sell to, um, you know, on Amazon for other uses. So I'm thinking about the, the sales model and how you're actually getting money to do this by based on all of what Cynthia said, there are many things to do, or it could just be owned by one government, you know, uh, and, and they use it. But that's exactly how you grow a business. You take that idea, you think about what else it can do, ideating, evolving the idea, and then thinking about how do we monetize that? Who would pay for that? Why would they pay for it? And that's all based on what it's changing. What's the why? Who's pain right. point? Right. There's multiple systems that inter, inter, uh, interconnect. So don't think linear. I always tell my students, don't think linear. Think multidimensional. And, and look at all the systems that are involved. You know, um, it's not just traffic, it's everything in the environment around it, all of the systems and all the strata of those systems uh, that come into play in that, that space. Very important. Yeah, we okay. even looked at some of the zoning information, the sewers, the water, the exactly. infrastructure. It just like- The bus schedule. So much stuff. The bus know. schedule. And, pedestrian and, crossings, yeah. Right. Everything. And then the other, the dog walkers, and then the other side of that, is um I just lost my train of thought again this keeps on happening to me oh well, oh no uh yeah i lost it um i'd love to hear from some of the people that probably aren't there because they're not on but um anybody j uh, j lo you want to add anything um i was uh, not, not i think everybody hit the right notes uh I, I pretty much agree with what's been said. Uh, the only thing I was thinking, um, um, more from, from an overall perspective here, from those that are students here that have participated in the hackathon, uh, who are trying to get plugged in, trying to network, uh, trying to uh, figure out how, how do I, you know, how do I get in, you know, how do I get started? Uh, and the thing that always, um, appeal to me is is uh try to make as many connections as you can like you know through linkedin but the most important thing that i always take away is um reciprocation and paying it forward you know yeah. good one yeah you know, i i always appreciate it when uh people who appear to be at a higher further along in their careers or at an elevated level uh, took the time to mentor me and their philosophy was, you know, you never know, you may be in a position to, uh, to help me when I might need it. Uh, the roles could be reversed, almost the philosophy of, you know, the concept of giving blood. Yep. You know, you do something because it may help somebody else. You're doing it for, you know, not just for your own career advancement, but for altruistic reasons. Right. That was perfect. And a perfect segue back to Andrea. So what we talked about was really the fact that you need to network because, and we talked about people really are willing to network these days and open up and you have to grow a thicker skin anyways, an entrepreneur and a, you know, if you want to be a leader, but you have to network, document what you learned here, 
There are a lot of um, resources and everyone in this room is paying it forward. All of us that are doing this this weekend, the judges, the mentors, the program committee, all do it as volunteers because we believe in our community and we believe in you and we want to help build it. So, you know, you bet we're going to take your call when you call us. You know, those are like, oh God, you know, it's payday. Someone actually followed up because, uh, you know, like I said, you showed up this weekend, you did something and keep on doing it because that's how you make change one step at a time and stay on your path. And, um, you know, remember to grow the idea, the skills and your mindset, and you will be fine. So that was great. Thanks to everybody who contributed and back to Andrea. Well, Eileen, you are amazing. Thank you so much for uh, facilitating that conversation. That was great. Um, and she's right. It's all about finding um, somebody to, to, to work with. And there's people out there that want to be there to support you, to mentor you, um, and to help you carry your ideas forward. That's really what it's all about. Um, so our judges were super impressed with all of the solutions that you developed, especially given that, what, we started this less than 48 hours ago, and that, but actually 24 hours ago, right? Um, so we didn't even have a full, full, full weekend to do this. Um, absolutely amazing. And what they decided they wanted to do is they wanted to recognize everybody who participated and everybody who contributed to the, de to the development of solutions for the problem. So they switched things around a bit. And with that, I'm going to share the um, prizes that we have again, and we changed the prizes a bit so that we could be more inclusive. Um, so you should see my screen, I'm going to present. And we changed them a bit to recognize a best overall community hack, a workforce development prize, and a best GIS hack. You'll see that everybody will get, um, and actually I need to change them a little bit, but um, each team, um, we have three teams presenting. Each team will receive um, $400, $400 in gift cards split amongst your team members. And you will have um, two mentoring sessions with a VC. And all the hackers um, are going to, all of the teams will be recognized on social media and on the website. So at some point we'll be writing up all of your presentations, your ideas, and also on um, what category you want under. So under our best overall community hack, we'd like to recognize um, you ought to join us, our Autism Cares team. Woo all right. Good job. The judges were super impressed with the minimal viable product that you developed and that um, you created something that um, actually showcased your, 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 all of your resources, the resources, the, um, the instructional tools for the uh, people with autism, as well as the mapping um, that you were able to do to identify the resources in the community. So well done. The Workforce Development Prize. Um, no surprise, I don't think, that, that we're recognizing anonymous hiring in workforce development. The judges were very impressed with your passion and also with the idea that you're giving people that might have, for some reason, a background that people would be uncomfortable with or be biased against, I guess I should say, um, giving them an opportunity and a, a platform where they could um, connect with employers and potentially um, skill up. So really nice job with that. Thank you, um, Anonymous Hiring. Dream. Dream. Well done, really great, really great. And the last one, the best GIS hack is our transportation project. Well done. Um, the judges were super impressed with the use of data to develop this tool. Really well done using open data to solve the problem and look at your audience from very different um, perspectives, um, applying different personas to that, and also being willing to um, shift your perspective. You went in with one perspective and you found a different way to kind of pivot and look at a different audience for who you were developing this project for. So really well done with that. Excellent job.
Everybody will be, of course, um, recognized under Hacker's Choice Award because we're going to um, showcase all of you on the Open Hub website and with the Open Hub social media. So nicely, nicely done. Very excited to do that. So really great, all of you. We were fighting hard. Yes, they were. They, they yes, they, they really did. Everybody, um, different, different perspectives all around. So awesome. So before we end, because I don't want to end just on this, because I do want to give you a couple of directions to go to. And before I leave too, in the chat, um, Abishri and Patrick, I think, and Dominic, if you could in the chat, just write down all the members of your team, because I want to make sure that I associate um, every person with the correct team. Um, so we have that information. So if you could just throw that in the chat, that would be fabulous uh, for me. All right. So before we go for that, I do want to let me stop sharing here. Um, and I'm going to bring up a couple of websites. So you all work really, really, really hard together this weekend as a team. That's the other thing that really impressed the judges, that here we had um, teams forming that, again, it's not easy. Some of your teams were very big, and you were able to stay focused and develop a project and collaborate um, and, and work together to present and come up with a solution. Not an easy task with teams bigger than two, I would say, right? Um, sometimes teams bigger than one, um, but, but really in this case, uh, teams bigger than two, uh, it could be a real challenge to, to work together and pull together to come up with something. So you guys did a fantastic job. Towards that, I want to share some, am I still sharing my screen? Yes, I am. Oh, oh, wonderful. So Startup New York is a program that is available. For you and I will be putting all of these resources in Discord so you can go there and get them too. And they'll be under the general chat channel. You'll see you'll see them there. So Startup New York is um, a program that helps new and expanding businesses, and they have mentors and resources available for um, businesses that want to launch and helping you launch. Another one, of course, is Open Hub Project. Lots of coding and web development tools there, but also, you might not know this, I don't know where it is, but on Monday nights, there's a coding club, right, Yulia? Yes. I think that was and also, just by the way. Oh, okay, and also, <laughs> whatever. You can correct my grammar, I'm on the fly here, Patrick. Um, and they also have a, uh, a coding club on Monday nights. So really like-minded people coming together and sharing ideas, that's what it's about. And that's what Yulia brings together on Mondays. Um, and also, uh, Yulia is offering a couple of different classes, so we'll be raffling prizes off for those. And there's prizes for upcoming uh, boot camps that she's got for a Python course, and then Python for data visualization. So we'll be doing that ra raffle in just a moment. Then we have Hudson Valley Startup Fund. And again, helps businesses grow with seed capital connections and um, members' experiences with mentoring other businesses. That's another source of um, support for you. Excel is a, um, helps you launch your business as well. That's venture capital, I think, right? Yep. And so they're available. And the last resource that I have here for right now is Hudson Valley Venture Hub at SUNY New Paltz. And again, links to funding, links to uh, people to support your ideas, links to people to help you develop it. So all of those are great resources. And um, if I find some others, I will add them too in the general chat channel on Discord. But really, those are places where you've started this weekend. That's places where you can continue to grow your idea and connect with other people. All right. And the last thing I'm going to do, I have a random name picker. I really do. I'm going to show you. I don't want you to think I'm uh, trying to sneak something in here. And so I'm going to pick some random names. And the first one is for our Python course. So we're going to pick a random name here. And the winner for our Python course. And of course, where did it go? Who did we pick? Uh, Arna. 
All right, Arna. So you won registration to our Python course. Look at what's Eileen clapping with over there. Oh, she's got a skeleton hand. She's ready for Halloween. <laughs> and let's see, let's pick Halloween. another name. So the next, the next three names um, that we pick are gonna be for the Python data, visual, data visualization course. And I think that's a three week course, right, Yulia? She's, she's busy. All right, I'm going to just pick a name. And I think. <laughs> oh, it's a five week. The, the Python for data visualization is five weeks? Five weeks. All right. All, right. all, all, right. all, all five courses weeks. are five right. weeks. Yes. I got it wrong. The winner, Dom. So you have a registration for the Python for data visualization course. Nice job. And two more. Actually, let's, let's do the following. We will let them choose which which one of those courses they want, because sometimes they can, they are not ready to jump on data visualization without Got basic it. Python. All right, okay? so you have Either your one. choice. Dominic and Arna, you can choose from the Python course, the basics one, or the Python for data visualization. And if you have questions mm -hmm. about that, the teacher, the fabulous, wonderful, amazing teacher for those courses is Cynthia Marcello, she's right here. And so you can, you can send her some questions in the chat if you have them. The next one we have is Kyle. You get to choose. All right, Kyle. And the last person. Is, let me scroll down, Dev. There you go. All right. Thanks a lot. So we have, we have those there. So um, Arna, Kyle, Dom and Dev. Um, Yulia will be in touch with you and you can let her know which course you want to register for and we'll get you all set up for that class. So again, um, before we say goodbye today, I just want to do two things. One, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, for participating, for believing in the community, for wanting to give back. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And for just being a part of um, spending your weekend this way, right? Um, thinking, collaborating, sharing, building, and believing. And so thank you so much for being a part of the vision that Open Hub has set forth for the Newburgh community, the Hudson Valley. And in this case is really, our reach has been worldwide with Abishri's uh, participation and Samir's participation from India. So really very fantastic, really beautiful. Um, the next thing, don't give up. You've got resources to move forward. They'll be populated in uh, the in Discord. So go back there and grab them. I'll add the links in a little bit later today. And keep believing and keep building and creating and find your mentors and carry your ideas forward. Well done, all of you. Bravo. Get a, can I create a group picture? Great yes, group picture? Idea. Sure. Everybody wants to. Uh, if, if you want to, if you, if you oh, Abstri is in the US actually. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Look at that. I'm in India. Oh, um, some years in the Samir's US. Samir's in the no. US. Oh, for, okay, okay. I got it wrong. I got it backwards. I'm sorry. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. See, you don't know where anybody is, right? We're all <laughs> just here together. To me, we're all in Newburgh, New York today. Mm -hmm. um, don't leave you have a lot of logistics to be handled you have to receive your prizes and to do so you have to connect with me you have to send me your shared presentation your links all of that stuff where do we do that slack discord if you're not sending your names or if you're not contacting me i cannot send you the prizes right and what else i put into the chat right now on zoom chat but everything will be communicated through htfs slack channel and discord it is the Any? you asked about each other's emails. So here is the list with winners. You're all winners. And the last but not the least to mention, Senator Schofield, New York State Senator, he was about to come and greet and just appreciate you. And due to time conflict and due to we change the schedule, he was not able to do that, but he said he will have certificate for each of you with your names and acknowledgement. So this is a big thing where I'm boxing the government right now. All right. right Any others for pictures? Okay. All, All right. right. Anybody else? If you want to, if you want to, um, if you want to be in the picture, on camera. Uh, 
Let's see. Everybody. Uh, three. One, two, three. Cheese. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. <laughs> All right, remember, connect on Slack so that we can make sure you get your prizes. And again, well done. Work. Really. We will need to work. Whoops. Yep, excellent job by all. Well done. Well yep. done, everyone. Well done. Um, uh, Andrea, they also wanted the judges and the mentors and the program committee uh, emails to link them in, or they're linked in, I guess, is really. We they're full name. They're you know full what? Name. I'll put, I will put that on Discord as well in the general chat. You got okay. it. Great. But yep. I will have everything in this spreadsheet. Yep. That's if, awesome. if some people That's like cool. Scott had Scott Judge New York, they couldn't find him. <laughs> uh -huh. I know. Yeah, no, no. We'll fix that. It's we'll true. fix that. Good point. We'll put the full names of the judges and if I can find it and uh, their link. Not picking on um, you. Just links as well. No, no, no. <laughs> That's awesome. The main conclusion: stay connected. <laughs> stay connected. Definitely. Yep. Yes. That's what we All said. Right. Enjoy your weekend. Have a 